Today is the very first day of my off-season jump shot retraining. I don't have any leagues going on. The pickup is pretty much dried up. There's games, but they're not good. And the, uh, the coaching season doesn't start for a while, so it's a good opportunity for me to retrain my jump shot. So what you're seeing today is a brand new shot, basically, based on a new philosophy. Um, something I've been wanting to do for a while, but with games going on, I haven't wanted to actually change my shot. But since I can actually go a month without playing a, a game, with a month without shooting a jump shot if I want to, now seems like a good time to uh, build something entirely new from the ground up. And, it, you know, every time you try to make changes to your jump shot, the moment you go back into a game, you're pretty much going to revert. It really takes like three weeks, a solid month of retraining before you... If you make major changes before uh, they kick in, so I'm real big on not really making drastic changes to your jump shot unless you have a well, mo really a month long window to to work on it. It's a long time, but I think that it's worth it. So, a um, couple things going on here. Lots of things going on. First of all, this guy comes in. He wants to shoot with me. That's kind of annoying, but whatever. Nothing I can do about it. Hopefully, I'm just gonna be like. Se honestly, like semi, just cold to him, so he'll go shoot in another hoop. Um, I just don't necessarily want to work with him right now. But, anyways, that's that's the hard reality of it. But what's going on is I'm shooting barefoot. You probably noticed that. Why the hell am I shooting barefoot? Well, that's actually a conscious thing that I do. Um, and there's a lot going on with it. So you've seen my barefoot workouts in the sand. I really think that working out barefoot's the way to go often, but on a basketball court, it forces you to be real conscious of your foot placement, what you're doing with your feet, and also it allows me to take out the lower body in my shot. Right now, all you're seeing is upper body. There's no legs, there's no jump, there's no nothing, and I don't want any of that because I'm rebuilding my jump shot from the ground up, so I want to do it in pieces. I want to start with just the upper body, so this allows me to focus on my upper body. Okay, so let's talk about the philosophy shift. The philosophy shift. Um, previously, I've operated on a philosophy based on I want my palm facing towards the basket so that I can release directly at the basket. Makes sense? Um, well, that r resulted in some inconsistencies in my jumper as um, my palm may be facing towards the basket, but since my uh, palm is basically facing to the left when I'm shooting it forces me to flare my elbow out way wide and I'm flinging with only my forearm so I changed my philosophy entirely my philosophy is I want my elbow to be underneath the ball directly for the duration of the shot and my elbow is going to move directly upwards in one smooth motion so it's a one motion shot um, there's no hitch in it there's no hold, there's no catapult, there's no nothing, it's just one motion straight up, uh, the elbow rises and with it the ball rises. So that makes sense why that's mechanically something that you'd want? It makes sense to me and you can kind of see it in action. The elbow just goes straight up, the ball's directly under it and uh, what it does is it creates a lot of force very minimally. You know, you can see that I'm shooting barefoot with no legs and I'm shooting from the elbow with, uh, with a lot of arc. That's actually like something a lot of shots don't have. I mean, a lot of people's shots don't have. I think that's a fair amount of range and arc for no legs. And you also notice how smooth it is. It's not like, uh, even though I'm getting a lot of power into it, I'm not pushing very hard. It's just uh, an efficient use of energy. Just that elbow is just going straight up and with it, the ball is. So I think that makes for a pretty, a oh, pretty tremendous, pretty tremendous improvement in what I've been doing. Uh, my jumper has been, it's been fine because I've put a lot of work into creating, recreating something, which isn't necessarily the most fundamental. But I think this is going to give me a lot more range and a lot more power, and it's going to allow me to, by using less force, get injured less from shooting. Now. 
you often hear that the legs create all the power in the jumper. Um, that's bogus. You can just see it, you know, with me, the upper body's creating a lot of the power. Uh, now, what people mean when they say that is you don't want to be really, like, exerting the upper body. You want it to be a, a fluid motion. But the idea that the upper body isn't creating any power is just ludicrous. You want the upper body to be creating power in an efficient manner. So that's what this jump shot is all about. Getting underneath it, getting my elbow underneath it, going straight up in one motion. Um, let's take a look at this guy shooting around with us because he's there. Might as well look at it. He's something funky. His off arm's flying off early. Um, it's not a fluid motion. There's a hitch. He comes back and then pushes it forward. And that's going to result in a lot less range. So he should probably look at his form under a camera. It makes a big difference. So what I'm doing is I'm sh shooting until I have a make at the right elbow and shooting until I have a make at the left elbow and going back and forth. I'm not comfortable going um, farther than this without bringing the legs in. I don't think there's a reason to either, um, as this is kind of the extent of the upper body range, I feel. Um, I feel that it's important to end every set on a make, and it's, I don't have a problem sometimes ending every repetition on a make. Um, something that I see a lot of guys in the gym do when they're just shooting around is they try something crazy and then they miss it and then they sheepishly move on to something else. My opinion, just if you try something crazy, shoot it until you make it. That way you know what it takes to actually make the shot. Otherwise, you're just wasting time, right? So that's why I always want to end on a make. Uh, I like to end on consecutive makes. So that's what I'm going for here. Uh, yeah, I got consecutive makes, so I'm out of it. So this is barefoot, and then I'm gonna move on to the mirror room so I can see it directly in front of me. For those of you guys who are familiar with my channel at all, you know I love to train in the mirror room. Um, if you don't have a mirror room, find one if you can. I've got a really, really beautiful one here at the UW IMA, and I'm lucky to have access to this. So this allows me to make adjustments to my form in real time. I can see exactly what it looks like. I can see it from the front. And there's a few things that I'm working on here in the mirror room. The first thing is I want to make sure my elbow is directly underneath the ball. And I just want to check for that. Uh, I can look. It's just very obvious to me. I don't have to go by feel. I can see what it looks like and I can mentally compare to what NBA players are doing. And I can uh, just kind of think about how the physics work as I see it. Um, another thing that's going on here is uh, I get to check the backspin on the ball. Now, something that I recently took off my shot is I was following the ball with my gaze of vision rather than fixating on the rim. Uh, that's not good, and the reason why, I actually learned this at HoopFest, I had a friend who's like, dude, you're falling with your head. You need to stop doing that. Is because that is a motion that does not contribute towards the jump shot. It actually detracts, right? Every single little motion of your body detracts from your jump. Sh uh, every single little motion of your body should contribute to your jump shot. Otherwise, it takes away, right? So I took away, and now I gaze directly at the rim. But what I lose from that is I can't watch my back spin. So what I can do instead is go in the mirror room, take shots, uh, let the ball bounce, and uh, watch as the ball spins back towards me perfectly on the seams, or it doesn't spin back perfectly on the seams. So that's something that i got to work in here. I don't necessarily need a hoop to work on shooting. This is just a good thing to, uh, to be doing, I feel. It's not necessarily the most fun, but it's repetitive and it works. It pays off in time. And I'm, I'm excited for y'all to see, and I'm excited to experience uh, the improvements from my jump shot. I mean, you guys aren't going to see what my older one looked like, but you guys are going to see the new one, and it's going to be sweet. Uh, another thing to work on in the mirror room is uh, some footwork. Start to do some more advanced stuff, like imagining um, uh, dribbling. We'll get to that when that happens, but for now I'm really just getting as many repetitions as I can while watching it, just so I can understand. I think it's really important to just know what you're doing. Okay, so I want to dribble into my shot now uh, and just kind of get it from like 
four of the major footworks. The first one just being stepping into it on the left side and shooting, and then I want to just step into it on the right side. Uh, it's probably hard to tell from the quality of the video, but you'll notice that I'm actually controlling the ball on the seams. There's no adjustment. I want to be taking my dribble uh, and having the control of the seams the entire time and picking the ball up and just going to a shot. So I did the traditional left hand foot and the right foot. Now I'm going to do left consecutive step, right, basically fake attack. This is uh, just fundamental footwork, and you call it the Kevin Durant pull up if you want. This guy really does a lot of that, right? And then fake drive via consecutive step. Shoot into it, one motion controlled on the seams. Uh, that's the way to do it. So as far as mirror rooms go, I mean, your gym might have one. If they have a dance studio, you might be able to get in there in downtime if you come to the gym before gym closes the last 30 minutes. Ask nicely, say you're just going to dribble in there. Uh, they may be down with it. If your gym doesn't have it, ask your friends. I really think it's that important. Um, it makes your learning so much faster, as you're going to see. This is my very first day. Ooh, okay. If you want to rewind, that was what my old jumper looked like. Over the left shoulder with the right hand. Real awkward. Um, but as you're going to see from the next video, or as we move on to, to, three, to um, putting the legs into it, this is really, really fast learning for a brand new jump shot. Just because, one, it makes sense. And two, the way that I practice it is very, very efficient. I don't want to spend a ton of time working on my jump shot, but I want my jump shot to be accurate too. So I want the I want energy efficient basketball, man. That's what we're all about. So from here, we're putting the legs into it, and that's it. I'm starting from the high school three point line. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, notice how like little amount of energy I am exerting from the lower body or the upper body. There's really not much and there's a tremendous amount of arc in this shot. It's going off screen up top and I'm barely putting anything into it. So this is me seeing it and saying, this is working. I really like this shot. Uh, it makes sense to me. The upper body and the lower body are working together. So here's something we don't often talk about in jump shooting. And for those of you guys who have made it this far, this is really what the video is about. You guys care about not getting injured. That's why you're watching this. So, we often talk about consistency in jump shooting, right? We want a consistent jump shot. What does that mean? We want to be able to repeat the same motion over and over. Why? So we don't have to retrain. If we can repeat the same motion over and over, you know, we only need to do it 10 times a day, and that's perfect maintenance. It's going to be perfect. <clears throat> but, as our body breaks down and we get injured and our body changes, then we need to retrain, right? Because the old way doesn't work anymore. We're not allowed to do it. So I wanted to develop an ergonomic jump shot. And what I mean by that is I have more range, I have more arc now, and, but what that really means is I'm putting less of my, I'm, like I'm pushing against the ground not as hard. It's not as bad for my legs. So I had a, I had a jump shot, right? I used to come down here and shoot sets of 100. And in 2011, I was shooting 80s out of 100, high 70s or low 80s almost every time. That's pretty good, and I was shooting them in game, and it was great. But it wasn't, it wasn't a consistent shot in that it wasn't sustainable. Even though I could do it over and over and over, I was requiring so much force to get off. And I was shooting, I was shooting this from NBA too. I was requiring so much force to get off that I developed a pretty severe Achilles condition, which I'm still fighting. Um, you know, we're all injured, let's be real, and we're all fighting that. So that, right now, that's my demon, is my, is my left Achilles. And it came from my unsustainable, inconsistent jump shot. So I have, you know, I took the jumper out of my game in a lot of ways and worked on, on driving and passing and dribbling and kickouts and floaters and all this, but... I want to come back with a jump shot in a major way. In order to do that, I need it to be ergonomic. I want something that I can take with me when I'm 40. And if you look at this, why not? This is an old man shot. It's one motion. This is an old man slash girl shot. And I think that's a good way to shoot. Why not? I don't need to jump in the air, cock the ball behind my head, and launch it. I mean, that's going to be hard to get blocked, but it's not very quick either. This is just a quick shot 
one motion, real ergonomic, real consistent. I'm going to be able to do this for years. I'm going to be able to do it from deep. And I'm excited by that. I'm extremely excited. It's, willing, it's worth it for me to, to be on the court four or five days a week and not even play in a game or not even take jumpers in games just so I can work on this. So as for what you're seeing me do here, um, you're watching me. It's, I'm not worried about making it game-like right now. I just want to be able to get the repetition down. So I'm going, dribbling in with my right hand and turning and shooting over my right shoulder. Really simple. I just want to get it exactly the same every time. I don't care if it's game-like. I just want to be able to get a lot of shots off and I want to be them, them from exactly the same. Repetition is king in jumping. Jump shooting for consistency. Once I've mastered this, I'm going to come in with the left hand. I'm going to come in, start attacking with other dribbling moves. But for now, this is it. Uh, I haven't been keeping track of my percentage. There's an air ball on the left. You're going to see an air ball on the right, too. But we bounce back from that. It's a new shot. We expect to make misses. I think I started with like six or seven out of eight. So um, it's definitely a high, still over 50%. In practice, I always want to be shooting in the 80%, which is pretty high. But I'll get there. This is the first day. Um, and I, I think that this whole set is in the 60s or low 70s. Um, I would have to count to, to know, but you guys can do that for me if you want, or you can not. Um, it's like semi-conditioning drill as well as I just keep moving. You know, I slow down to get into the shot just so I can do the same thing over and over, but, um, you know, repetition, speed, whap, whap, hitting a couple in a row. Um, at this point, I'm thinking I'm going to end on a consecutive make, but I hit a third, and I'm like, I'm going to keep going, and I'm like, I hit a fourth, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to end, I just kept thinking I'm going to hit one more, and then I'm going to walk off, always have to end on makes, and bang, end on five in a row, and we're out, always end on a make, uh, I mean, you can see me shut the camera off, I, I end on a make, so do it.